Hey guys, CryptoGrounds here. Welcome back to another idle game tutorial video. This is episode 18 and today we're going to be doing daily events. So now just a heads up, this is single player only. I don't want to get to the multiplayer side stuff because setting up the server, getting the leaderboard stuff is quite a hassle and I have not perfected it myself. Um, now as a tradition now, I'm going to show my face just to prove I'm not an Indian and I am not scamming people on Udemy. <laughs> Alright, anyways, so daily events, we're going to have seven different events, but I'm only going to code two, just to show an example, because I don't have time to come up with uh, seven different events, and honestly, I want these events to be something that you make yourself, because they're going to be pretty basic, they're just going to click this button, and that's it, alright, so it'll be pretty basic buttons, so I'm going to have them reward a special currency, ah, uh, sorry, all right, sorry about that. Um, so I'm gonna have my events be like a, a reward, a special currency that are gonna, that's gonna boost your production basically. So I can add this on the header, or you could put that wherever you want, wherever you like. Anchor that to the top. I'm gonna put a text here. Now I had some suggest you to put it somewhere where it won't be interruptive, I guess, or or just wherever it seems necessary, to be honest. So I'm gonna do tokens as our event currency, or we can just do event tokens. And we can do zero, and then that will be a zero or one a one times a boost. Uh, make sure best fit is on. I can make this bigger. Change the color of this if we want to. I can make them like blue or something make something pretty like blue maybe aqua i like aqua all right so we have our event tokens right there so we're gonna make a fourth button now this user interface is getting kind of trash i this is we're at the point where we should have a header or a footer right here to manage our navigation because stuff on the top is definitely not the way to go Especially if this is a mobile game. I don't think people are going to want to reach all the way to the top of the screen in order to get somewhere. Uh, so yeah, for now, let's just have an events button right here. Mm, we need to move stuff around first. Main screen. Yeah, we can just literally have this in the right here if we want to. In the center. Sure. Okay. And then I'm gonna name this to tokens text. This is our event tokens text right there. Um, and then our achievements button. We're gonna name this events button. Okay. This will be labeled as events, or we can put daily events. So you can do this in several ways. You can do you can put you do you can do an event every one every twenty four hours. Or you can do it once every like new event. So what I'm going to do, or you can ha do it like every hour is the same event, but then you have a new one the next day. That's how I do it for Crypto Clickers. So it's an hourly event, but every day there's a new one for an entire week, and then it repeats. So I'm going to do cooldown based. So you have you can do like six hours. Six hours you can do this event again, or you can wait till the next one if you really wanted to. So we'll do that, and I'll include that in our, uh, ah, do we have offline progress? No, we don't. Okay, I really, I mean, I have an offline progress video, which is the idle, the Clicker Heroes tutorial video, so you can implement that. And if you guys really want me to do a new, like, separate offline video, I will do that. I'll do offline progress, and I'll show you how you can do all that kind of cool stuff. Um, anyways, let's get on with events. So I'm just going to copy and paste this achievement screen to save our lives. Rename it as event screen and turn it on. Get rid of all of our achievement stuff. And I want to turn off main screen. Event screen. Okay. So this will be our events. So we're going to have two game objects. I'm going to do a Monday and a Tuesday one. Monday and the Tuesday event. All right. Make the make sure these are ankled stretch, and you can set the left to zero, 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 so it's stretched to the entire canvas of the event screen. Um, also, make sure these are zeros too, just to get rid of random numbers. 
zero zero. Perfect. Okay. Um, Morgan controller events below the navigation. So anywhere in here, and I'm gonna actually make the stretch. Let's see if this work. Yeah, that works perfectly. Okay. So you can do however you, you can do the UI however you want to. And we're just gonna come up with two super quick events. Uh, so what does our event generally need? So we need a text. We need a label. Let's give it some text. Light, medium. Twenty five, thirty, and I'm gonna do event tokens plus zero. This will be our reward on completion. I'm also gonna show you guys how to e like end the event early too. Like if a user is like tired of playing it, they can just leave it early. I'm gonna make this best fit. Cool. We have our event tokens reward right there. We're gonna rename this reward text or just reward. Um. Okay. So our currency really can be anything. Um. How I do? I have TRX, which is a crypto, and that's our that's my event currency that translates to your reward, which is the event tokens. So I'm gonna make this currency. Let's do. Um. This could be any currency you want. Let's make this, uh, what this should this be? I don't know what this should be. Maybe crypto grounds. <laughs> we are creating crypto grounds. And that's our currency for the game, I guess we can say. And actually, I'd rather do plus zero event tokens. And I want to make this the same color as our text up here. I'm going to make this bold. Put an outline on it. I'd suggest you not to use outlines since it causes lag. But for the sake of this, I'm going to do it anyways. Come on, text. Be big. Be big. Be big. Oh my gosh, I am failing miserably. Zero crypto grounds, and then we get zero event tokens. Cool. Awesome. Okay, and now I don't want to get too advanced here, so actually, we're just going to copy a button here that I already did, and then we can call this click. Create plus one, create one crypto grounds. This is so much fun, am I right? <laughs> and then we're gonna have an upgrade here. All right, click upgrade. Improve creation. Improve creation plus one, and then our cost will be ten CG or crypt you know, crypto grounds. I don't want to really write that all out. So this is our event. That's literally it. Actually, we have a few things we need to do. We need to have a game object. Create empty. We're gonna call this unlocked. This is for when the event is unlocked already. We want to stretch to the entire uh, Monday game object. And we'll just put everything in here. And this will be a canvas group. Uh, actually, no, we can make this just an empty game object here. And then we're going to have a locked that says when to start, stop. So we're going to create a button here. Or we can literally just copy and paste these. Now, you could do whatever you want with this button, but this will be my start and exit button. And this will also have our cooldown timer, too. 
So let's make this 50. And I want this to be extremely bold. All right, that's our event. <laughs> Pretty lame, but that's for you to be creative, not just to do exactly what I do. Because if this is your event, I'm sorry, but nobody's going to really participate. Except they're going to participate just for the boost. <laughs> they're not going to enjoy it. So make sure you make fun events if you're doing this. Okay. And for Tuesday, let's create Tuesday real quick. So we can turn off Monday. Let's create Tuesday. And actually, let's, let's give them names too. Let's say this is the Monday event. Click. This is completely about click. Now, be more again, more be more creative than me and actually make something unique. Cool. We have our Monday event, which is click and obviously for Tuesday it's going to be about um, production. So this will be the same button here, but we are also going to create a production upgrade. Production upgrade. Gain plus one CG per second. Cost 10 CG. All right, that's it. <laughs> Pretty simple. Let's see. And we could also have our same currency here. You can also do a new currency if you really wanted to. But I'm going to use the same currency because that's my name. And this will be Tuesday event. And this will be production. So again, be creative. All right. We can get coding now. So in order to successfully do this, we need to be able to identify what day it is. Okay, so let's jump straight to our code, which we are going to do it in. Now, honestly, in my opinion, I would create a new script at this point. So let's do that. We're gonna create a new script. We're gonna call it event manager. Now, make sure it's not manager, make sure it's manager or whatever you wanna name it. But honestly, during this entire time, for each like game mode like upgrades achievements they should honestly each be on its own script and events too that's why i'm doing that right now oh we do have achievement oh yeah never mind but yeah make sure you actually oh this is not the right event system uh where's our game object okay we need to create that create empty oh why did i give that okay event manager we need to get rid of it from here <laughs> So yeah, make sure you have a new game object for that. Event game manager. And I'm gonna move these scripts to the side, out of the canvas. Okay. Perfecto. Let's hop right in. All right, we are in our script. So we are going to start this with two things. Uh, let's get our layout done. So we have a canvas, which is our events. And honestly, we can, we don't really have to manage anything here. Oh, okay, you do your thing. Um, so let's add, let's go back to the main script. Unless you're doing this on one script, then you just need to do what I do. Um, we are going to add a canvas called public, my goodness, public canvas events group, okay. We have our events group, and we are going to add to our change tabs. So case events. Uh, we're gonna make game object dot set active true. Um, so also what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna add a, a void here. Uh, we're gonna do disable all right here. So this is not repetitive. We are going to disable all of these at once. So make sure this is false, false. 
And then what we can do here is every time we change tabs, we will call disable all and we will only enable the one that we want to see. And there we go. That kind of just shortens shortens it, especially for the the future when you have tons of these. All right. Now our navigation is done. We're going to add our UI. So we're going to have a public text event tokens text. All right. Plain and simple. Oh, first we got to import the Unity or Unity Engine dot UI namespace. Okay, and I'm gonna start using arrays because honestly, it's a lot organ it's a lot more organized. But I also want to show you something that you will need to learn in the future is like how to actually properly declare the arrays. So we have several of the same things. We have two game objects, so we are going to add public game object array events. And now what we can do is new game object array and then put two because we only have two. But the problem is if we change this to three, we can't do that. It's because it's already defined as two. We would have to create a separate events and, and then we can change that to three. So if we changed it, so if we saved it, go back to Unity, change this to three, it won't work. If we come back, if we rename it to like events D, then we can change the number so then it redefines it. This is where, this is the solution for this. You go to public void start and you set events equal to new game object two. Okay. That should work. If not, hopefully it won't. Okay, I see. This actually won't work. But this is how you would actually change the array. Now, what we could do is grab all of our game objects automatically, but I really don't want to do that. So knowing I'm only going to have two events, or actually there's going to be a maximum of seven events, I would recommend you do a new game object seven, okay? Just so you have seven events, all right? And if you want to add more, then you're just going to have to rename this and change this to whatever number you want. So that's kind of the problem with um, declaring uh, arrays like this on the outside, okay? All right, so... Now we have our events. We have two event objects for sure. Now we have a few things. We have a text array. We will do reward text. Uh, we will have currency text. Currency text. And now we have, so it's, this honestly really depends on how much stuff you have. So if Monday is completely different than Tuesday, then array is not going to really work for this. But since we know we have a cost, only one cost text, sorry, one cost text for each event, we can easily just make an array here. Cost text. <clears throat> yeah, we'll just cost text. So remember, that only works for that situation. Otherwise, I would recommend you just having certain text for that, um, for each event, if that makes sense. So if I had two upgrades in Tuesday with two costs, then in that situation, I would do something like public text Monday or whatever the event is, Monday cost text one. And let's say Tuesday is the one that has two. We'll have Tuesday. We can do Tuesday cost text one, Tuesday cost text two, or you can just do Tuesday cost text equals new text and however many texts you know you're going to have maximum. Otherwise, again, you're going to have to change this to, if you want to change this after you import it into Unity. So in that case, that would be two just like that. But in our situation, we don't need to do that. So hopefully that makes sense. If you guys have any questions below, make sure you just, uh, if you have any questions, make sure you leave them down below. Um, okay. Uh, I think we're good with our UI. Oh, right. We actually have to have our public text start text equals new text seven. Now again, I'm only using ten, two events, so I'm only going to use two of these texts. 
Um, okay, we don't need to initialize. Right now, we don't need to initialize anything here. <laughs> All right. We're going to add some stuff. Uh, public. We're going to add a big double. Actually, really, this can be a float. It depends on how big your events are going to be. But I'm going to do big double, so make sure you're aware of that. I've talked about this in the previous episode, if you guys watched that. Um, a new big double array. This will be our currencies. No, this will actually be our reward. Now, the problem is that we can't just like do the arrow thing and have an equation right here. We have to actually do that in the update method. Public void updates. Okay. So we can do reward zero is equal to, for example, uh, big double dot pow. Oh, no, we're going to do log 10. And that will be our currency, which we will add eventually. So we'll just keep that there, I guess. Um, let's have our saved variables in our data class. Okay, so we're gonna put events here. And now I'm gonna do public big double array. So since I'm gonna say we are gonna have seven events, we're just gonna do currencies. Actually, we don't need to save currencies because if you go offline and come back, your event's gonna end. That really doesn't make any sense. So what we can save here is our event tokens, public big double event tokens. Okay. And here, what else do we need to save? We need to save our timer. So this will be a float actually. So public float um, event cool down equals new float. And that will be a size of seven. Now we are going to define them down here. So this is a little different because we're using an array here, but event tokens will simply be zero and event cooldown. We are going to use for int i equals zero. I is greater is less than event cooldown dot count or dot length i plus plus. And this will also be minus one because of index zero. And event cooldown at index i will equal zero. So when we do a full reset, it will make sure to set all the cooldowns back to zero. Okay? Even if we're only using two in our situation. Now we can go back to our ward, and that will be based on. Actually, nah, we need to make a big double currencies here. <laughs> this is where we put it now. So we're going to create that new array with size 7. And now reward 0 is going to equal to currency 0 plus 1. Now this is important because if we do log 0, we're going to get an NAN. All right, and that, that becomes a big problem. Okay. Um, if you don't know what log is, log is basically, we will draw this out. I don't want to go all the way to Desmos, so I'll just draw it out right here. So let's say this is our graph right here. A log is basically like that. It's like that. Actually. Yeah, that's what a log is. I was thinking of a square or a square root. Square root it's more like that. It's more like a parabola. This is more like steeper, I guess, where it it flattens out faster. If that makes sense, that's what a log is. If you don't know what it is, you don't understand, then I would I would look that up. Um, reward. This one will be lower because of how much currency you're going to get. So make sure these rewards are kind of balanced. So you'll have to experiment with this. So what I'm going to do is do... I'm literally just going to divide this by 2, I guess. Or divide this by, yeah. I'm gonna, since it's like production, you don't have to spam click. I'm going to make this divide by 5. 
ठीक है Okay, so we're gonna set all these texts real quick. So our event text, and we are going to do something cool. We're going to do public idle tutorial game game. And what we're gonna do here is set our event tokens text dot text is equal to game dot data. So we are accessing our data right here. Alright, instead of doing public player data game player data and then like this public player data instead of doing it here we're this is creating a brand new copy of this all right and since this um, our main class right here is mono behavior we are able to drag that in okay so we'll use refer off of here and what we can do is create a var a temporary or not a temporary but we'll just do data we can set that equal to game dot data so what this does here is that it creates it sets this temporary variable, which is if we do player data right here instead of var, player data equals game dot data. We are setting this data's reference to our main one right here, the one that we use for our game. If that makes sense, like whatever you see in here is the data we are accessing, and then here we can just change that to var since it already knows what variable it is, Var variable type. So we can do now, instead of writing game.data every single time, we can just do data.eventTokens. And then we need to format that. How do we do that? We'll do this. Event tokens. Okay. And then we will do format it just as so. And I'm going to create a big double real quick. I'm going to put this at the top. Public big double uh, to event token boost. And now you can do this however you want, but I'm just going to do data. Ah, oh, shoot, we got to do eth.data because we don't have this var, this variable right here. So we'll just type uh, it's game dot data dot event tokens divide by 100. Now obviously you can make this uh, a log or square root or you can make it linear or exponential however you like. And then we're going to add our boost right here. And this will be another curly braces to put our variable in here. Don't forget the dollar sign. That's very important. And also we can add our notation so we can do game dot oh, what is our notation I forgot what what do we use for our notation it's a notation method is this private I believe so yep so make sure you make this notation method public if you want to use it somewhere else save that we can do game dot notation method and we are able to convert this to scientific notation. And we can do the same thing here. Now why are we getting an error? It's because we need our comma F2 to determine we only want two decimals. And actually for tokens you can make it zero or you can make it F0 if you wanted to. But since we are being rewarded in des like we're getting fractions of event points. We're just going to do F2. We want to see those extra decimals. All right. Oh. Now, <laughs> got a lot to do. This is not a simple process. We're going to add some more variables to manage our events. So we're going to do public rule event active. All right, and um, we want to be able to display our reward, I guess. So what we can do here is add at the top, we can do public game object event reward pop up. Okay, and uh, we can add, uh, we wanted to determine which one is active. So we will do event active ID 
we will give Monday would be one, Tuesday would be two, etc. Okay, so this is a tricky part. I kind of don't exactly remember how I format this. So I am looking at my events script to get this perfect. So we need to determine the, the date. So we can do that by public string. We can actually, this is a variable. We could make this a method if we wanted to. We might. Let's see. See how this turns out. So this will be day of the week. It's a string. We're just going to do a method. All right. So now the reason this is going to be a little different from when I'm doing it on my end is that I actually grab a date from the server. And I actually grab it from a global API to make sure everyone's on the same event. So if you want to do that, you can figure, you can uh, learn on my, uh, you can learn on some of my, like my leaderboard tutorial on how to use API, or you can just search up how to use Unity web request. Cause I really don't feel like attempting to get this to work, to get into the networking stuff. I want to stay this non Wi-Fi related or local, I guess what we can say. So what we can do here is we can return, um, let's create a new date time. Date time dot, or date time dt is equal to date time dot now. And what we can return that is date time or dt day of the week dot to string. So now what this does is that day of the week is, um, just a string, it returns well, what data, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, etc. All right, and it also returns it as capitalized, so we have Monday or Tuesday, stuff like that. Cool. Now, in here, we want to manage what days we're going to do. All right, so uh, I'm back. All right, so I'm back. We need to do a few things before I forget, because I looked over my script again. I'm like, oh my god, I would have forgotten this. Uh, let's make that a var, just because we can. We need to add a public string previous day checked, because we need to check to see if it actually changes, right? And we can do this by... Am I doing on start? This is one of the ways to do it. We will make sure our event active is set to false. We want to not be starting any events, even though by default it's it's false. And we want to set our previous day checked is equal to the previous is equal to day. <gasps> excuse me, day of the week. Cool, this can be marked private. All right, and then now events, we will do the exact same thing. After all of this code at the very bottom, we will make sure to check for the previous day at every frame. So if um, this is different than which we'll do eventually, then a date that we will check later on in the code, and then it will trigger that new event system. All right, so the first thing we need to do is to make sure to reset these all the time. So if previous day checked is not equal to day of the week and event active, then we need to make sure we disable them. All right. So we can do, I'm trying to think. I think I should have added I think I should add a bool here. We're gonna add a bool, all right. Public bool event active. Ugh, we already have event active though. Mm, this is, might get a little confusing. Basically, I'm trying to make a series of bools to dis to determine which event is okay. You know what? Screw that. We're not gonna do that. We're going to do event active ID. We are going to set that to zero. And we want to make sure, so we'll do for int i equals zero. i is less than. So we only have two events. So we need to check this twice. Okay. Now for you, since you, if you have seven events, you are going to do this seven times instead, starting at index zero. 
Okay. And we can. We can. We can. We can. We can. Okay. Something I forgot to add here. Actually, do we already have it? I think it's the cooldown time. Yeah, we already do that. Perfecto. We will do game or data dot event cooldown at index i is equal to zero. Okay, we're basically resetting it once they do it. And now we're gonna add a protection thing. Let's see. Let's see. These events are five minutes long. We're gonna make it so they can't join if it's five away, five minutes away from uh, start. I'm gonna attempt to do that. If I don't end up doing it, then you can scream at me, scream in agony in the comment sections below. You can literally just like, Crypto Grounds, add it for six. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's get started. So now we need to run individual events. So we can add a switch case here and we will do event um, day of the week. No, this is day of the week, day of the week. Cool. So now we're going to do case Monday. Remember, we're doing Monday and Tuesday. We are going to do public. I'm going to add public void run event run event UI. And we're going to do int ID here. And this will be run event UI. And this will be this will be one because our inactive is zero. And now we can do negative one and start from zero, but I'd rather day one to be Monday, if that makes sense. So this might look a little confusing, but just be aware of what the difference between what zero means for the ID and what it means for the arrays, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. If not, ask me below and I will clarify. Tuesday will be run event ID two. If you aren't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Maybe you like the video if you enjoy the video. That would mean so much to me. All right, that's all we gotta do for this, and then we can just manage the rest of the UI here. So now we're gonna add another switch case here. And this will be an ID, and our case is one. And there's a lot of switch case going action going on here. Uh, what we can do is oh i totally forgot we actually have two game objects we have the unlocked and the not we have the unlocked one so we want to make sure these game objects are not shown so events unlocked all right that's an, we're going to create that new array size of seven as usual and we're going to do case one we're going to do if event active ID is equal to one there is equal to ID basically it's one then we are going to do events unlocked game oh events unlocked ID game object dot set active true cool 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 and uh, let's see we're just gonna do a bunch of this Text stuff. Uh, so here, this will be pretty much our active stuff. So hopefully this is not too confusing. I am trying my hardest not to be confusing. Events ID dot game object dot set active true. We only want to show the events that are actually inactive all right hmm and we're only going to do ui stuff here this is for optimization purposes okay so here we're going to do for int i equals zero i is less than two I plus plus. Now we're gonna set all of these to false, and then we're gonna set the one. 
I set events i to false and id to true. Because we want all of them except this except the one that's active right now to be enabled, if that makes sense. Okay. Now I think we can actually do some stuff. Cool. And we might not even need this switch statement after all. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. So we have the reward text. So let's get rid of this. Why is it doing this? Mamma mia. Cool. So if reward text I, or ID, sorry, dot text, uh, we are going to do plus blah event tokens. So that would be plus our event or reward ID space event tokens. Cool. And I'm just inver inverting this if statement here. So basically it won't run any of this if the event for that ID is inactive. Okay. And honestly, pretty much it will be because we are only running, uh, Actually, never mind. Scratch what I was going to say. <laughs> I was thinking of something else. Okay. So next we need our currency text. So now my currencies are the same. So this is where you might need to determine what currency you're using so while using a switch statement. So if ID is equal to one, you can do the currency text equal this way or this way. But since mine are the same, I am just going to do it all in one. Okay. So the currency text is going to be equal to dollar sign. Eh, get out of there. Dollar sign. Currencies. ID. Cryptograms. Cool. Uh, now our cost text. Cost text. ID dot text is going to be equal to. So now we haven't done any of the cost related stuff, but I'm going to make a, an equation for these. So we're going to have our public big double. Again, these probably shouldn't be big doubles. It depends on how big your numbers are going. These should probably be floats because our numbers are not going high at all. But we're going to do big double just because I can. But I still prefer floats. You know what, let's do float. Eh, whatever. I'm doing big double. I can't make up my mind. Uh, this will be our cost. Equals new big double. Seven. Public big double. This should be the ints. So this is the one I'll do ints. Int levels equals new int seven. Cool. So now this will simply be dollar sign, cost, curly braces, cost, ID, at index ID. All right, so the start text is going to be a little complex. Oh, the first thing we need to do, we also need to make coins be based on an equation. And I'm going to honestly going to make them the same. So for int i equals zero, i less than 2, so we'll go to a maximum of 1, i plus plus. We're going to do cos i, let me make this far too, is going to be equal to 10 times big double dot pow. I'm going to do 1.15 to the power of levels id. There we go, we got a basic equation i. All right. So now we, our start text is going to be based on different things. It's going to have a cooldown, and it's going to be all that good stuff. So what we can do, uh, I'm trying to think. OK, I see how we're going to do this. So basically here, our start text, that text is going to be equal to so if event ID is equal to zero and uh, data, oh, we got to do eth.data, eth.data, no, not eth, sorry, 
game dot data <laughs> game dot data we can also make another var up here let's do that var data is equal to game dot data so if i if the current one is 0 and data dot cooldown is greater than 0 question mark ID forgot the ID oh right <laughs> forgot an array event cooldown at ID index index ID is greater than 0 then we are going to display that cooldown okay so honestly this is probably gonna work better in a diff statement in our favor so we're gonna do that if event active ID is equal to zero. Then we can check. So if our, our start text, we will do the question mark operator here. Okay. So if it is, and uh, so if it's greater than, we'll display our time here, colon, start event okay cool so we need to display this cooldown specifically and I will pull that up date time so I'm gonna be completely honest I don't exactly remember how to do this okay I see how we're gonna do this Okay, so we're gonna do var time is equal to time span dot from seconds, and we have to put in a, f a double, but we can put in a float. So we're gonna do that. Data dot event cooldown id, and how this works is that this formats into like uh, I believe it's an en it's an enum, where you have day, or you have days, hours, minutes, seconds. Or it's a class, or it's it's an object. I don't remember, but basically that's how it's organized. So how we can do that is by doing time dot two string at sign. I don't exactly know what at sign does. I'm gonna be completely honest. This is how I did it. There might be a better way than this. So let's say we want hours. We're going to do hh backslash colon mm backslash colon ss. So let's say we have hours for a cooldown, which we're going to do six. We're going to do we're going to do an hour or two hours. We'll do that. So we have our start text that should work. Now we need to have else. If it's something else, if it's active. Now we could flip this, I believe. No, it doesn't ask us to do. Okay, that's odd. All right. Otherwise, our start text will equal. Um, so if the cooldown is greater than zero. No, that wouldn't make sense. Wow, if it's already in one, we don't need this question mark operator. We're gonna do exit event because we want to exit early. Okay. All right. I think our UI is officially finished. Cool. So let's just keep going. We need to do the start, the the, com the completion, the exit. So let's start with the start. So this will actually be a public void toggle event. Int ID. We'll see if we need this. Let's do var data dot game data equals game dot data. Hopefully I'm not going too fast or I'm going too slow. I'm just trying to do this in an efficient way. Better way than I do it for my system too. Maybe. We'll see how it turns out. Um Okay, so now we need to check if the event active ID is equal to zero and our cooldown, our data.cooldown, 
at ID is greater than is less than or equal than zero. If so, okay, so another thing. Oh, so this will be our start. So this will actually be our start. Now else, this will be our exit, okay? Otherwise, if it is active, then we gotta turn it off, right? So we'll send, we'll start with the, the exit first. So if that active ID will be set to zero, we will set our cooldown to two hours, which is 6,400 seconds. Okay. And we have to reward our players too. So we're going to do data dot event tokens plus equals reward at ID. Perfecto. And we can reset all of this right now too if we want to. So we can do currencies at ID is equal to zero. We can do levels at ID is equal to zero. And that honestly should be good. I think that's, yep, that's the only things we need to reset. We actually, remember, hopefully you aren't skipping. I just pulled a stupid mistake, but we actually have to do the reward first before the reset. Or else if we reset the currency stuff, then we will, our reward will be set to zero because once we access, uh, once we access our reward, it will be zero, okay? So just make sure you're paying attention to that. I think that is it for our exit. For our start, we're gonna set event active ID to ID. We are going to, we're gonna use the same cooldown. Okay, I see how this, uh, we'll try this. I don't exactly know if this is gonna work. We're gonna do data dot event cooldown ID equals. We're gonna do five minutes. What is that? Three three hundred seconds. Okay, that should work. We are gonna reset this stuff just in case. Just in case. All right. That should work. That is our start. Another thing we need to do is to make sure the players. Don't start like immediately. So we're gonna do and. Uh, shoot, I don't. Uh, I have never done this before. So let's try this now. Date time. Uh. Can we do that? Yeah, I didn't think we could. <laughs> so we're going to create a temporary date time now. Equals new. Equals date time dot now. So and date time dot. Okay, so this is gonna be a little complicated, but we're gonna do something here. We're gonna put this in uh, parentheses. So if now dot hour is equal to, let's see, hour. If hour is equal to 23 and now dot minute is equal to 59. Uh, so our events actually, so, okay, so I see. And now dot minute is equal to, is greater than or equal than 55. Okay, that should work. So basically we're checking it if it's at 23rd hour, which is an hour before like the next event, the next day. And the minute is greater or equal than 55. So that's five minutes away. Or exact or less than the next day or to the next hour, pretty much. Then we're not going to we're gonna make sure this is false. So but we do that by putting the exclamation mark, saying that as long as it's not five minutes till the next day, this event is safe to run. Okay? Cool. 
I should add that to my game now. <laughs> it took me a bit to like kind of think that out, even though it's something so simple. Cool, 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 cool. All right, so now we're gonna do another method: public void complete event. And now, ironically, we already did that. That's what this is right here: complete event var data equals game dot data int id cool we have our complete event therefore we can replace it here all right we can make that private too perfecto very easy very easy so we have our start and exit are complete and we have our a our UI done we need to actually do the game itself so I think these are yeah never mind I was gonna say these should be even internal methods to make for the buttons but I forgot it's gotta actually be on the outside of the public method so we're gonna do public void so we have two clicks so now make sure you have a method that fits accordingly to each one now since I have two clicks both do the exact same thing I'm just gonna make one method for the click click with an int ID and we're gonna do a switch case which in really we have an array we don't need to do that so now we are going to get our currencies our currencies I plus equal to plus I uh, know this is ID plus equal that plus equal uh, one so that's for basics. So now the thing here is that the second event is production and the first one's click. So this is actually where some, you know, switch statement comes into play. So switch ID. So if our event is zero, we're gonna do, no, we're gonna do one for Monday. So we're gonna do one for Monday. So if it's Monday, then we are going to add the click times levels ID and honestly to say it's safer to say currency is one plus equals one but it doesn't make it it's the same thing you can do ID or one for both and actually we can get rid of this one times and just do levels uh levels plus one because I'll be zero because levels is zero by default for us now for case two we aren't upgrading that at all. So I'm just going to make this ID. So this one will just be currencies ID plus one. Break. That is it. That is all this click is. So now. Okay. So for Tuesday, we have a production upgrade, right? So we're gonna run our stuff here, I guess we can say. Or we can have a private void run event, int id. And actually, before I forget, I wanna run this event id in certain cases. If, honestly this is most of the id, this actually it's just this one. So if the, data dot event no it's just game game dot events group dot game object I did this in the previous episode dot active self is true we're going to run this we're going to do the exact same thing here now we're only doing it for this run event UI because we want the UI to run only for on that page everything else can be run in the background if we're not looking at it so here we're gonna add a switch case now we don't need any run events for the first one so we're only going to do this for case two all right so if case two we are basically going to do currencies id plus equals levels ID times time dot delta time. Of course, you're probably gonna have a lot more than me, so make sure 
that you kind of understand why I'm doing this here. So now we're going to go back to here. We're going to do run event two. And this is, remember, there's no curly braces here. This means that only this line is applied to this. So this right here is the exact same thing as this. Remember that, okay? This is just much cleaner. And yeah, so we have our run events outside of this, and we don't need anything here. And I honestly believe that is it. Oh, no. <laughs> Joke's on me. That's actually not it. <laughs> um... Okay, we have to actually do the cooldown too. So if event active ID equals zero and okay, so we'll just do that. Right. Okay. So this is actually gonna be we're gonna auto complete this event. I forgot. This is how we do it. So where am I calling this? Oh, right there. Cool. Okay. So if event active ID and uh, game data. So this is actually where we should do. Okay. So we're going to have to do this in a for loop. Int i equals zero. Oh, I have a good idea. I could make this. Okay. <laughs> I am going off to different branches. We're going to do public int current day. Okay. So I'm going to leave this here. I have a good idea. So you can expand on this. But if it's Monday, we're going to return 1. Return 2. Awesome sauce. Otherwise, return zero. Cool. So we will do this for if event ID equals zero and game data dot event cooldown for the active day is greater than zero, then we are going to subtract that. We're going to count down this timer is time dot delta time uh else if if event active id is not equal to zero and we're still going to count down right here else one more else if now this can probably be simplified and i'm just not thinking straight now, if this timer is less than or equal to zero, we're going to do complete event current day. Now, again, don't forget to add on to this if you have more days, okay, or more events. So this is just how my system works. So yours might be completely different from mine, okay? So if you just have one event, you do it manually. Just make sure you kind of just get this management right. Otherwise, I believe this is it. <laughs> This is a lot of stuff. So I am expecting errors. I am expecting mistakes. We will see about that. Uh, looks like no even error. I don't think so. Cool. So this is what the arrays look like. So also another thing, you can change the size here too. That's pretty cool. So our events is zero because I'm an idiot and I deleted it and then I saved it and then I added seven. So make sure we change our size to seven here. That should work. Very cool. Thank you, Unity, for letting us be able to do that. Because if we start, it shouldn't reset. If it does, then we need to do that in the start method. So we need to drag our game manager into here. Our event tokens right here. Uh, oh, shoot. Our event reward pop up. I'm sure you guys know how to do this. But I guess we can do it anyways. So on event complete, we are just gonna do event pop up game object dot set active true, and then we are going to do pub public void close event reward, and that will be game object dot set active false. 
And also, we need to add one more text. Public text event reward text. This will be for our pop-up. And again, you can be unique to your variables. I hope you are doing that. We are going to set this text to text equals plus dollar sign. And we're going to do here. Um, reward. Oh, shoot. We actually need to do that above. <laughs> We need to do this here before the reset. Make sure you're paying attention to that or else you're going to see zeros and you're going to be commenting on my videos. Why am I seeing zero? Make sure you do it before it resets. Okay? It goes along for any of this kind of stuff. Cool. We will make that UI real quick. We're going to make a game object. Reward. It's going to be a very basic one. Because this video is already long enough. Cool. And then we're going to have a button. Its color will be the backdrop. And the word, oh, we'll say close. Make that white. And then here, I'm going to make this bold. plus zero. Uh, we need to have more text. Uh, event tokens. Cool. Uh, lots of last minute changes. I have faith that this is going to work. Cool. Very boring pop-up that will work for now. Also, before we're in here, Let's drag our event manager into the click button, and we are going to set this as event manager close event reward. Cool. And then here, we're going to do the same thing. So for our production, oh shoot, we forgot to do actual buy methods. Oh man, that, oh shoot, <laughs> that's not good. That's not good. Okay, so this, we're going to just create one method because we have our same, the same levels and this should be pretty easy. This will be just public void by this will be int ID. And basically, we're going to check if levels. No, 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 no. If currencies ID is greater or equal than cost ID at index ID, then we are going to levels levels plus no 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 we're still gonna do levels id plus plus we but we need to subtract the cost first currencies minus equals costs id and that should work one more last minute change and i think we're good to go so what i do to make my life easier is to select all of our buttons we need to add in so all of these and what we're going to do is dr just drag the event manager and then go to the clicks event manager click and then now this one is one and two so our first button will be one for monday and two for tuesday and the click upgrade will be buy event manager buy so the first one will be one and the second one will be two okay we are done with our buttons we can close board too Cool. We can honestly turn off that as well. And also our events button. We wanted to change that achievement text to events for the events button only. And we can go back to main screen. Now let's finish adding this stuff. So our reward, oh, we need to actually go back to here. So we have our text right here, which is our reward from the pop-up. And now our events. We only have two. Just remember that, okay? So I could literally change this to two if I want to, but we only have two. So I'm only going to drag in two. So our events, we have Monday and Tuesday. And our events unlocked will be for the Monday one and Tuesday. We're done with those, for me at least. And then we have our reward for the first one, our reward for the second one, and our currencies. 
currency from Monday, currency from Tuesday. And now we have our costs. So that will be from here. So actually what I did wrong is that I have this here. So let's go back. So what I did wrong is that this is all in the same one. So we're going to create another text. I'm going to split that in half. Game plus one CG per second. Anchor that to the bottom. And this will be our cost text. So this will be our cost. And this will be our label. And this will be our cost. We're going to do the exact same thing for our Monday. We're going to anchor that to the top. You can even this out however you want. Just as so. Now I'm going to copy and paste this for click upgrade. Except we're going to change the, the label to improve creation one. Hoping this won't look stupid. Uh, let's test that here actually. Yeah, that'll look just fine. Okay. And we can remove this old text here. Let's go back to our event manager. Hopefully you understood that. Basically we're going to get the cost from there and cost from Tuesday. And the start text is our start buttons. Text from Monday, text from Tuesday. And our award, that is it. We are done. Now we just got to cross our fingers. For one, it's it's Sunday, so we're going to have to do some debugging here, and I'll show you how to do that. Let's just see what happens. Yeah, so right now it loads Tuesday, which is not correct. Oh, wait, we forgot our pop-up here. I'm surprised we didn't get an error for that. Okay, we got to close that, because it's not, so it's just loading that by default. So we can close the event screen, event manager, reward. So how can we do this? So let's go to where we get the day of week. Can I do yesterday? Yesterday? No. So what we'll do here is return day of week. We need to set this back by one. We can do dt day 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 is equal to so monday i am guessing day for monday is zero i'm guessing that's how they do it let's see oh it's day of week okay so i'm gonna do day of week minus equals two does that work okay we'll just do dt day minus why does it not work has no setter what the what no, 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 that's not right. No, 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 no. Mm, how did I do this? Okay. <laughs> I see how I did this. Okay, that is actually weird. Okay. All right, well... We're going to do this. I'm going to copy this from here. Because we're going to do this. We're going to set DT equal to this right here. So now we're going to actually do date time dot now dot year. Replace this stuff with me. We're going to do the same thing for month. And the same thing for day. But since it's Sunday, we need to test for Monday. <clears throat> so we're going to do day plus one. Okay. This should work. Cross my fingers. If it doesn't, then I'm dumb. That's for sure. Now make sure you save your project. We did a lot of hard work. Cross my fingers. Ah, oh, what did we do? What did we do? Oh, for our game manager, we totally forgot to add our events canvas. Nope, not that. This one right here. So make sure you drag that. Save. So if you have a 
uh, an unassigned reference exemption. That's pretty much what it means. So we're going to daily events. Cool. We're on Tuesday. Why are we on Tuesday? I don't know. Is it Tuesday? Let's try this. Let's do without this plus one. I'm going to try some debugging. If this doesn't work, then I don't know. <laughs> uh, what happens to the boost? Also, we need to add a plus one to this boost, too. I totally forgot. Plus one. And we need to add an X here. So it looks like we actually have a boost. Cool. And now I actually, I totally forgot to, okay, so this boost right here, we need to go back to our main script here. Okay, so we're going to go to public event manager event. Now what we can do here, or events, we'll just do events. So what we can do here is go to where our gems boost is. So we're just going to go search up gem gem boost we're gonna do times gem boost we need to see where that is data dot gems boost right here so whenever we multiply our prestige it's most likely we're gonna to want to do events too so we'll just do events dot event token time or event boost and multiply it by that and we're gonna do the same thing in there we're gonna add this here too I think this is all of it. Yep. Uh, perfect. Alrighty. That works. Uh, for a click, we can actually add this to coins click value or multiply it as well. Perfect. We're good to go. All right. I am crossing my fingers. If this doesn't work, I'm going to cry. Did we change the date? I am positive. Yeah, we did. Okay, cool. All right, let's try this. See if it's Monday. If not, then I don't know what's going on. Oh, another null reference. Forgot to drag the events in here. Mamma mia. Okay, so now events. So now there is none because it's Sunday. So that was really strange and how it didn't do that before. So we're going to do plus one again and cross our fingers. We're going to get Monday. If not, then we're doing something wrong with the, the code. Yeah, okay. We're still getting Tuesday. Why? I don't know. Let's check this out. So that's the run events. What about the run event UI? Uh, okay. We're going to debug our ID. We're going to see where we are going with this. Now, I'm going to pause the video here, and I'll explain what I'm going to do. Okay. Okay. So I found the issue is that we were actually doing ID 1 and 2. So I forgot. We actually have to do zero and one here. That's right, because we're doing zero index. So that is exactly why that is happening. And I think I'm going to screw up most of this. Current day cooldown. So yeah, all of this current day stuff, we need to subtract it by one. Or actually, for current day, we can just do return zero and one. So this just kind of got mixed up with our one and ones and twos. So this can stay, because that doesn't really happen in mid-code. This all should be fine. Hopefully, we'll cross our fingers, and if something's up, we will fix that. So after this saves, and after we save, we can run this game. Okay. All right, we have our Monday event. Looks like we are ready to get started. So let's start event. <laughs> oh, funny thing. I forgot to actually... <laughs> I forgot to do the actual start button. Because now it goes to upgrades. Alright, so make sure you drag your event manager and do event manager 
start. And then, yeah, we should be good to go on that one. <laughs> All right. Daily events, start. Why? Okay, so it looks like nothing's like interacting with this. Okay. So I got the issue fixed. So basically what I had to do is go to my run event UI and I had to change the for loop to this. The reason why I was doing that is because it was constantly every frame or not every frame, but every time it ran through, it was constantly flickering. Like you can't see it, but it was flickering between true and false because remember when we disabled it and then we re-enabled it because it just keeps switching very fast so then it's, that was just not stable so basically i just add an if statement that basically if i is equal to the id we're just going to make it true while the rest of them are false so for current active so basically we're just saying the current game object the current event game object to true and the rest of them are false um so now the next issue is the button the start button is still not working so obviously it's calling it but I do not know why it's not starting it. So we're going to go to toggle. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Start. Where's start? Okay. I am really stupid. I assigned it to start, which is like the Unity start method. We need to set it to toggle events. So make sure this one is... So what is this one? One. And the second one is two. So remember, we're only doing one and two for the stuff that is involved with the event active ID. Honestly, I should have made it negative one instead of zero, and that would have made it a lot less confusing. But that was my that was my bad. <laughs> so now this should work. Oh, we got ten minutes. Alright. Uh start. Oh. Okay. Okay. Alright, so I guess we already have a cooldown. I'm guessing that's from the save system. So let's go to our data. Our event cooldowns. Okay. Yeah, see, we've already started this cooldown. So we're going to set this to one second. And now we should be able to start. Let's try. Hmm. This is very interesting indeed. I believe it's because our buttons are one and two. So the solution to fix this, the official solution, I promise this is the official solution. We're going to make var, so we're going to change this to, we're going to make var id equals id, uh, var id 2 equals id minus 1, because we are going to grab every single index. So this is 1, 2. Actually, this one's fine. This one we can do plus 1. So this is actually id. While the rest of these indexes right here, we got to do minus one because these are zero based. In the complete event, same thing here. So this should work. This honestly should work. And if this doesn't work, I'm going to cry myself to sleep. All right. Let's give this one shot. Ready? Ah, rats. Also, the time is wrong. <laughs> It's not 6,400. It's actually 7,200. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's make sure that's 7,200 because that's actually two hours. So why are we getting... Why is it ending right off the bat? Okay. So I think I know the main reason why this is not working. The reason why it's not letting us do this challenge is simply because it's one minute till the next day. So I guess for now, we just got to wait. So I know we know that works, but it just doesn't work properly. So the thing we got to do here is not just complete the event automatically. We got to actually like do this. So we're going to do else if else if this is true, we're just going to ignore or literally just going to continue, which we do that by we're just going to return else we're going to complete the event. So that shouldn't happen and now we should be able to do this. Hopefully. Hopefully. All right. And if this doesn't work, then I really don't understand because it's the, there's only one way I can get to the complete event, and that was from that method. So we'll check that out. So now it should be Tuesday event. See, the time thing works. We got to test two things in one situation. So let's run it. Ah. Okay, I see now. 
our we need to make the the pop-up not show up and the time is not even correct either so we're gonna set this to one all right let's start it so the event started text is not updating this is not a good sign so our event active ID is two Looks like we didn't need this event active bool. But why is this not working now? Nothing's working. Is it updating? Oh, it's updating. So it looks like the UI is not updating. Okay, so that's an issue. So none of this UI is updating, and I don't know why. So we're actually going to have two complete events because honestly, we want the one. Uh, let's actually pass down a bool. Bool x if x. We're going to display this pop-up. And this is false, so we don't need that. And we're going to go back to the other one and display true, because we just completed the uh, this one. Oh, wait. We actually don't want to do that. <laughs> My apologies. All right, so we're going to add here is another else if statement. So basically, we're going to add if else if is greater than zero. We're just going to return it because we don't want to see that reward because that doesn't make any sense. Can we just like remove this? Okay, so what we can actually do is just add a, <laughs> a semicolon just to determine an empty statement. So basically, we're not doing anything here. We, we I mean, we could add this elf if, like, we could do elf if and make sure these are both false. We could do that too, but I'm just going to do this because I already did it. <laughs> um, so our next issue is related to the UI. None of the stuff is actually updating. So where is our currency? So here's our currency. So event active ID. So oh, we might have to change this too. Zero one. Okay, so here's another issue. We're we're running into the same situation as before. We actually need to create another ID too. Is equal to this is this is like the whole issue. I should have been consistent. This is completely my fault. And if you guys are confused at, at this part, I somewhat understand. I'm very sorry. This is all my fault. Uh, ID minus one. My apologies. No, no, that can't be right. I think it's just this right here. I think this is good. So event active ID plus one. So I think that's literally the only thing we have to do. So we have that. What else do we have to do? We have the timer. So I think that's it. And the whole thing is good to go. I'm pretty sure from based from my analysis. So let's just clear that and we'll give it another go. We'll have to reset our timers too. Oh, the event's still going. That's not good. That's not good. So the event cooldown is saving and uh yeah, we should do that. Start event. So that's the issue is that the cooldown is technically still going. So I think we might have to save. Okay, so the issue here is that the cooldown is still going, so we need to fix that. So what we're going to do is add this event active ID to our, our player data. And then by default, we're going to set this to zero. So now we're going to get a bunch of errors here because we need to access it from data dot. Now on start, what we're going to do is if uh, actually this, what we're going to do here is change the start method to start events. And what we're going to do is run this in our main script right after we load our data because we don't want to we don't want to risk 
having the merge thing where we access the variable before it actually loads because that can happen. So make sure you add the events.start events in your uh, start method in the main script or wherever your game runs. Um, so for here, we're going to do game data dot event ID. If it's not equal to zero, then we need to set it equal to zero and we need to reset our timer. We're going to do that for all of them just because who knows. Or what we could do, actually, this is uh, much easier. We can do game.data.event cooldown equals new float 7. Basically, we're just clearing all of it. We are resetting it from scratch and creating a new, um, a brand new array. All right. Cool, cool, cool. That should work. We're getting a bunch of, ah, uh, right, I forgot, got to fix all these first. Data dot, data dot, data dot. Game dot, nope, I already have a data. Data dot, data dot, data dot, data dot, data dot. All right, fix all those errors. All right, we should be good to go. I'm very done with this. This is a lie. I don't want to get into the multiplayer stuff. This is already enough. <laughs> All right, so we should be good. Looks like the timer's still running, though. Why is this such an issue? Okay, that's why. Because it's at false, and this is currently our cooldown. So we're just going to... The UI is still not going. Why? We're going to start it anyways. Okay, so our cost updates, our event is live. Our UI is still not updating. Unbelievable. But we got our exit event. But it's not exiting. Oh my god. That is so frustrating. That is so frustrating. Okay, so what I'm doing here, to make the exit work, we need to add this at uh, and data event active equals or ID equals zero. So we need to make sure we're actually not in a an event. Otherwise, we will just cancel it. So we're gonna add that to both of these. So this is the very weird setup. I'm not satisfied with it for sure. It can definitely be simplified, but I'm not. I'm not like too focused on it. I just want to get the actual issue done. Now we gotta fix the actual UI again because for some reason it's still not updating properly. Okay, so I see the problem here. It's actually adding to a different one right here. So let's press exit. Let's see what happens. Ah, it still says exit. Why? Can we create still? Events is not active. Our event. Uh, yeah, it looks like it reset, but the UI is just such an issue right now. I don't know why. I think that's it's because of this right here. Yeah, we need to have the start text not at the bottom. So that's one issue. The other issue is that we're adding to the wrong one. The wrong in index. So click here. We have one and two, right? Why am I doing that? It's zero and one. So that's, that's the same thing for the buy. It's just completely messing up our stuff. So what we're going to do here, like we should be doing properly, we're going to go back to our click in production, or our bio stuff. We're going to change our numbers. So the first one should be zero. First upgrade should be zero. And the second ones for both should be one. And that should fix everything. I am guessing it doesn't, but we'll see how it goes. Cool, we got our... Countdown, ready to go. Doesn't do anything on start. Correct Amundo. Uh, this become this just requires lots of testing in order to actually get this right. So we're gonna set this to one second, and we should go start our event. Booyah! Let's go. Okay, there we go. We have our events. We can clean stuff up. Cool. We can upgrade. And get more. So actually, I just noticed something. It's actually upgrading the click <laughs> instead of per second for the events. That's an issue. 
But we have our correct amount. So if we do exit event, we should get some event tokens. Cool. We got our event tokens, and it should be boosting everything else. When we start this again, it's supposed to clear this, but it didn't. I think I know why. We're going to do start event, and it, uh, yep, it resets it. We're going to do exit, and we should get our, ta our tokens again. So we know that part works. But to fix that issue, we need to do, the actually, we did the same thing for the buy. It's the actual reset thing, I think, that we screwed up on. Because when we clo toggle the event, we set the actual event ID. Oh, we do event ID minus one. Okay, I see. That's a bit weird, isn't it? Isn't that weird? That's a bit weird, I think. That's that's odd. Very odd. Uh, yeah, this does everything correctly. It just doesn't want to reset, I guess. Okay, that's fine. As long as we know it resets on start, then I think we should be fine with that. Uh, what else are we having issues with? Um, text display, yes. So we can do here, we can do game dot notation method around that. Add F2. And obviously we want to add that everything to the rest of the UI. So we'll just go up to our run events at UI. And yeah, we will add all this stuff. Another thing that isn't working is the per second stuff. Don't know why, but we'll, we'll check that out. I think it's something to do with the run event. So we actually need to change this to one. There we go. But I still don't understand why we're actually adding on to the click when we shouldn't be. So let's go to our click. So our click is zero and one, right? So we need to change this zero and one. That should be fixed. So make sure you change the right numbers. You're gonna, I know this is probably the most unorganized video I have ever made. I deeply apologize for that. But I would restart, but I did so much this video. So I, if you guys honestly need more help in the comments, then I completely understand that. All right, let's give this a shot. Get the 10. There we go. We get one per second. And we get one per click. Perfecto. So now we should add the timer to the exit event. So we're just going to let this run. We're going to get some event tokens. So let's let that run while we do that. So we can go back to our UI uh, method right here. And for exit event, we can also add a dollar sign. So let's add this var time to the outside because we're going to use this for other cases. Uh, dollar sign, exef, uh, exit events, we're going to add a little timer here. And we're going to do the exact same thing, time to string, etc. So this will be our time remaining. And also, we can, since the, we are in a braces, in the braces format like this, we can use a format specifier like this. This can only be done in here. You cannot do it right here. All right. Now we can save. Let's exit event cool and now you see we have our timer for our event and it should work so let's give it two seconds perfect this is our event system and it finally works anyway guys thank you for watching this video I hope you guys watched all of it and understood everything all the madness I did and if you didn't Make sure you go back and play, pay close attention. I jump back and forth a lot. So, yeah, just be careful with that. If you guys have any concerns, make sure you um, drop your comments and concerns and problems and issues, all that, in the comments below. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe if you aren't already, and drop a like, and turn on the bell. Anyways, thank you guys. Have a good day. Have a good night. Peace.